Hello. I've come into the studio because I'm fed up with all this wet weather and I'm trying to <clears throat> get myself going basically. <clears throat> fed up with it all. Can't do anything. Um, so here I am. What I'm doing, I've got this little board, I've painted it white, bright primed it. Now I'm just doing some Lowry type figures on it. Uh, I don't know how they're going to turn out. I've just started as you can see. This one is about Fergie who was my mum's boyfriend and it's, uh, it's about the first time we met. Uh, when I was uh, three, four, something like that. I still remember the meeting though, because he was quite a striking bloke. And uh, we'd come out of the, mum had come to pick me up at the children's home in Croydon. And we'd come out of there and we'd gone across the road from the gate of the children's home. And there's a pub, I think it's still there. Uh, Unfortunately, can't remember the name of it. But um, Mum took me in there. And I can still remember it all being full of the smell of beer or alcohol and uh, smoke, cigarette smoke, pipe smoke. And there was this big bloke. And uh, I can't remember the exact word she used, but she introduced me to him. This is, this is Fergie. And uh, I'd never met him before, well, as far as I knew, as far as I could remember, I was only three. And uh, this guy, he just, he picked me up above his head like this, that's me, and uh, planted a, a kiss on me, on me cheek. I can remember it all being all stubbly and smelling of, well, what I presumed was beer. So yeah, he picked me up and uh, that's me. Little Johnny boy. And um, Lowry used to do these sort of things, little paintings like this. I mean, you might be familiar with these bigger paintings, but he, um, he did, small paintings on bits of board or anything he could find. This is actually a piece of old uh, mahogany off of some chest of drawers or other I found somewhere and uh, painted it white and off I go. And well, that's what I'm doing. Got me fire lit. <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm wearing a suit. His given name was Robert it's Ferguson. New, it's, it's quite a new I knew suit. him as well, Fergie. It's new to me. And many of his I've friends called the, um, him Barney. My mother, who knew him shop. more intimately than most, if you get my drift, very often referred to him as that drunken bastard. She meant it too on occasion. Yes, I always wear a suit. But there was I'm something painting. between them, when I'm, you know, something when I'm that kept them tied to each other through thick and thin. Mood. Even though um, my mum married many times, did, Fergie was always suit, there in the background. To my shame, when I went to put it on. The first time I met him <laughs> was when I was about four or five years old. So I'm it would have been the early little, 1950s. A little bit of weight over the Christmas. At that time, I was a resident of Shirley Residential anyway. Children's Home, just yes, outside yes, Croydon in Surrey, um, later renamed Shirley Oaks. On her set, she's and Mum introduced him to me on one of her rare, becoming increasingly more rare things, visits. You just got to get used to that. Although I was very young, living. I can Thank remember the meeting very clearly. Fergie was a big man. He had a sagging lower lip which had anyway, the ability uh, to retain I'll get a soggy roll-up fag without any help from the, the upper lip. Results later. His nose was enormous okay. and flattened across oh. his face. 
No, no, I'll do that. Looking next. back yeah. on that meeting now, be back I think he must while. have known me before because he scooped me up in his arms, hugged me, and planted a wet kiss on my cheek. He had a few days' growth of bristle, of bristle, and it was unpleasantly sharp on my face. In subsequent meetings over the years, I never remember him being clean shaven. Today, I suppose it would be fashionable and called designer stubble. But Fergie's face was far too marked by life and excess to be fashionable. He smelled strongly of alcohol and tobacco. A smell I was to become familiar with over the years and something which I cannot remember as being unpleasant. Rather, the reverse, in fact. The rest of that first meeting with him was spent with me shyly peeking out at him from behind my mother's coat. He had three fingers missing from his right hand, a sawmill accident, and a very big gold earring in his left earlobe. Up until then I had thought that only villains in Enid Blyton books had earrings, so my observations of this big man were somewhat tinged with fear. Later. I learned that Fergie was a man to be wary of, but not by me, or anyone that he loved. Mum and Fergie vanished from my life for several years after that, and I was an unhappy child for a lot of the time. I suppose the authorities did their best for me. I remember different foster parents and foster aunts and uncles, and I suppose I was happy sometimes. But you know, a child needs a mother no matter how feckless she might be. I longed for her return. She appeared back into my life as suddenly and as unexpectedly as she had left it. I was 12 years old and living with foster parents in London. I hadn't seen her for six or seven years and there she was, not quite the beautiful princess of my imagination, but there she was, my beautiful sweet-faced mum. Everything happened so fast then. My clothes were flung into a suitcase. There was an argument with the foster mother, I remember, but it was very brief. I hardly had time to say goodbye. It was back into the waiting black taxi and off we went. So there I was at Victoria Station on board the famous Flying Scotsman, on my way to a new and hopefully happier life. It is so difficult to describe my emotions on that day. But have a try at imagining yourself as a child, thinking yourself abandoned forever. Then all of a sudden, there you are, back in the arms of your mother. I can tell you I was bewildered. Bewildered, but happy. This was the time when I properly got to know Fergie. Trollerman, lumberjack, saw doctor, cook. Fergie the fighter, the binge drinker, the bad man and the good man, often down, often down and out, but always there for me when I had nowhere else to go. Fergie has gone now. He's been dead for many years. But hardly a day goes by when I don't think about him. <laughs>